Good morning. This lesson is going to cover the strategy of solving systems by graphing. And this particular strategy, the reason we cover it is because the underlying concept is very, very important and is actually very, very useful. But as a practical strategy for actually coming up with the solutions to a system, it's not very good. So we are going to cover the concept and the idea behind it, but we'll do very limited practice on actually using the strategy. So we're going to begin this lesson by recalling the definition of a graph. Oh, come on. No! Shoot. Okay. A graph. I'm using a new um, pen to write on my tablet here, and I just had the wrong thing clicked there for a second. Um, a graph is the picture of all the points that make an equation true. So we want to think about that. That's how a graph is related to an equation. They're not these two totally different things where you have algebra where you deal with equations and then you have algebra that you deal with graphs. They are completely connected. So we're going to review this idea and make sure that, that you remember how this works. So I'm going to go over to the next slide and put up some graph paper. We'll do the coordinate grid here. That'll make it maybe easier for us. And we're going to graph the line y equals 2x minus 3. I'm going to try to do this as neatly as I possibly can. Now, we prefer to graph things with the shortcut. Remember, you can always make a table. So if, if you tend to mess up the shortcut, okay, you can always make a table. So you can plug in x is 0, x is 1, x is negative 1, x is 2. Um, and then on a piece of scratch paper, you can do your scratch work, and you can come up with the values of y and plot those points. And what's key about that idea is that it emphasizes that there's actually an infinite number of points that are on this line. There are an infinite number of x, y pairs that are going to make that equation true. But we don't really want to graph that way all the time because it's not very efficient. So we do have some shortcuts for graphing. If we look at the equation, come on, we can see that the y-intercept is negative 3. Now remember that that means that the line goes through the point 0, negative 3. If Ms. Braswell were teaching this, she wouldn't let you write just b equals negative 3. She would make you write b equals the point 0, negative 3. The y-intercept is a point. And I can plot that at the location 0, negative 3. Now we can also use the slope. The slope in this case is 2, but remember that that is 2 over 1. We started the year talking about what rational numbers are, and they're numbers that can be expressed as ratios. Usually we try to get rid of fractions, but when we're graphing lines, we want to remember that it is a fraction or could be written as one. And what that means is that I count up 2 and write 1 from the y-intercept. So I come down here to my y-intercept, and I'm going to count up 1, 2, and over 1, and that is going to locate my next point. Now, this is enough for us to draw the line. We only need two points to determine a line, but because of what I am going to do with this, I'm actually going to try to make this line a little bit more accurate. Um, the slope, if you recall, back like when I first started talking about lines, one of the key things about lines is that they have constant slope, which means if the slope of the line is 2, it's 2 everywhere along the line. So if I want to make this line more accurate, I can repeat the process of counting up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, and I can get a lot more um, points. I can also count down to left 1, that would be a negative over a negative, and you'll notice that those points are also on the line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And what this can do, now I'm going to do down to left one, down to left one. What that does is it actually makes my line um, a lot straighter. So when I go to, to draw it, I'm not 
as prone to wobbling on the, the page. And you, again, I want to tie this into um, the idea with, with the table. If you plug in x is equal to 0, you're going to get y equals negative 3. If you plugged in x is equal to 1, you would get y is negative 1. If you plugged in x is negative 1, you would get y is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. y is negative 5. If you plugged in x is equal to 2, you get y is 1. And so you could come up with those same points by creating the table. And it's not just those points. It's every point in between. So it's these points in here where you, x would be fractions and decimals and negatives and um, all kinds of stuff. And there would be y values that would match up with them that would also be fractions and decimals. All of these points make the equation true when you plug them in. Very important, very powerful idea. Okay, so what we are going to do on the next slide here is we are going to graph two lines. We are going to graph the line we just graphed, which is y equals 2x minus 3. And we're also going to graph the line y equals what? Negative one half x plus two. Okay. And what we're creating here are pictures of all the points that are going to make my purple equation true. true. Didn't mean to do that. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> all the points that make the purple equation true and all the points that make the red equation true. So I just did the, um, uh, graph for the y equals 2x minus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly put that graph back onto our coordinate plane here. All right, so that's the same line that we had over here in just different colors. Okay, and now I'm going to put in my other graph here for this other equation. Uh, I'll use red for that. Uh, the y-intercept is going to be a positive 2, so I count up 2 on my y-axis there. There we go. And then for the slope on this one, the slope is negative one half, which means I'm going to count down one and right two uh, from my y intercept. So down one, right two. And then in order to make this line as nice and straight as possible, I'm going to keep doing that. Down one, right two, down one, right two. I'm going to do a nice healthy number of points here. And then remember, you can always change that. Remember, you can put the negative in the, in, I'll click over here. You can put the negative in the numerator or the denominator. So you could do this. You could do one over negative two, which would mean you'd count up one and left two. So starting over here, I could do up one, left two. And notice that that puts me on the same line. So up one, left two. Like all of those points should be on that line. And remember, these are all the points that if I were to plug them into that red equation there, would make the red equation true. Because that's what, that's what graphs are. Now let's go, I'm going to actually label this. So the, the purple equation here, or the purple graph, this is all the points that make y equals 2x minus 3 true. And in the red, we have all points that make y equals negative one-half x plus two true. Now go back to the solution for a system, okay? We're going to go back to back when we started systems and I spent, it felt like forever, it felt like you know, 20 minutes of me talking about what is a system and what is the solution for a system and how do you know when you found it and, and so forth. But all of that is important because that connects what we were doing algebraically to what we're about to do graphically. The solution to a system, so when you are asked to solve a system, is the values of the variables that make all the equations in the system 
true. And there's that idea. They have to make all the equations true. So let's go back and look at this. In the purple, I have all the values that make the first equation true. In the red, I have all the values that make this, the red equation or the second equation true. If I'm looking for the points that make both equations true, I am looking for this point right here where they intersect. I am looking for this location right here. That is the point that works for both. And that is the point uh, 2, 1. Or you could write x equals 2, y equals 1. And that is the solution to the system. Take a moment, if you're watching this video at home, take a moment and pause the video and just let yourself think through why this concept makes sense. So this was my system. I had y equals 2x minus 3 and I had y equals negative one-half x plus two. And the solution was the point two, one. So I just want to demonstrate why that works as the solution. If I take the purple equation and I plug in y is equal to one and x is equal to two, Hang on, I did that backwards. Whatever mistakes you guys make, your teachers make them too. Um, we just catch them and we move on. I plug those in backwards. So, uh, we are plugging in y is equal to... I copied this stupid equation wrong. I tell you, if nothing else... That should be 2x minus 3. Uh, if nothing else, these videos memorialize how your teachers make the exact same thing mistakes you did. So I plugged them in right and I copied the equation wrong. So carrying on with this. Okay, so we were okay the first time if I had recognized that I had just simply pl plugged them uh, in, uh, copied the equation wrong. It was a minus three, not a minus one. Uh, sometimes that happens when I'm talking and writing at the same time. Uh, all right, so carrying this out, um, I have 1, and then we have 2 times 2 is 4, and then 4 minus 3 is 1. And you can see that that point works for the purple equation. And we'll repeat the process with the red equation, hopefully without uh, me copying stuff wrong. So I take uh, y is equal to 1, and then we have 1 half, and we're going to plug in the 2... That's a negative one half, and then um, one negative one half times two is negative one, and negative one plus two is one, and you can see that it works for both. So it meets that definition. So what's the key idea? What do we need to take away from this lesson? So key idea when graphing. The solution when graphing, so when graphing, comma, the solution, and I'm going to put a little parentheses there, okay, or solutions to a system are where the graphs intersect. Make sure that if you are not working off a copy of the notes, 
that you are writing that down. That is the key idea. That's where the whole last 14 minutes, 45 seconds have gone to is that when you are graphing, the solution to a system is where the graphs intersect. If I were being lazy as a teacher, I would just tell you that and then get you to graphing. But I try not to be lazy as a teacher and I try to go through why these things make sense. So we go back and we talk about what a graph actually is and why that makes sense. And then we go through an example and establish that that works and then show you that it works and it makes that um, definition of the solution to a system make sense. Okay, now here's, here's the problem, okay, with graphing. Oops, I think I just added an extra slide there. Graphing is time consuming. So we have to do a lot of like effort in our graphing there. It is also inaccurate. So lines are about as simple as a graph can get. And when you think back of like how I had to do this, I had to plot lots of points to make sure my lines were straight. Okay, because if they wobble at all, they'll intersect in the wrong spot and then you won't get the answer. Um, the other thing that can happen when it comes to graphing being inaccurate is this. Um, if you graph stuff and even if you graph them perfectly accurate, okay, you could still get a situation like this where they actually intersect like in the middle of one of your grids. Like there's no rule that says that the answer to the problem has to be these integer numbers. Um, so you could have the most perfect graphs in the world and they still don't intersect at a spot where you can figure out what the answer is. They also become almost impossible to do if you are graphing things that are curved, okay? Um, because it's one thing to try to make your line nice and straight, but it's another whole thing to try to get a curve accurate. Um, so graphing tends to be time consuming and inaccurate. So we don't rely on graphing as a primary way of solving them. But again, the concept of graphing um, uh, the, the solution to the system being the point of intersection is a really important concept and it can be very useful. Um, so how do we solve this problem? It's solved by using graphing calculators because if you know how to use a graphing calculator, a graphing calculator will not be time consuming and it won't be inaccurate. Your calculator is able to graph very complicated things very quickly and very accurately. Your graphing calculator is also programmed with the capability of finding those points of intersection. So at this point, I am gonna have my graphing calculator people do a different assignment from folks that don't have graphing calculators. So make sure that you're paying attention uh, to what the next set of directions are.